about two o'clock, so I'm gonna get started. Thank you, everybody, for uh, coming to this uh, talk. Uh, I'm just gonna go over replication, um, some of the things that, uh, some of the features that replication has that uh, aren't used very often. So, a little bit about me. Uh, I have worked with MongoDB for uh, about four years. I made the transition from being a sysadmin um, at a financial services company when they adopted uh, MongoDB and then went from there to a game, uh, game publishing company or a game developing company. And um, I've been with Percona since December of last year. So coming out of five, six months and I'm based out of Austin, Texas. So what I'll cover will be just a very quick uh, overview of replication in MongoDB. Um, just a quick look at vo voting, and then we'll, I'll spend some time on uh, delayed secondaries, uh, pr setting priorities when you do uh, that, uh, when you use hidden secondaries and tags, uh, and use those tags for uh, write concern and read preference uh, to direct your writes and reads. So, All right, so uh, just wanted to cover some of the key uh, features of replication. Since MongoDB is designed to be a distributed database, um, one of the key things that it uh, needs to avoid is a single point of failure, and replication is how it does that. So uh, it, replication allows uh, high availability and fault tolerance. Um, it, however, uses asynchronous uh, replication of data across the primary node and the secondary node. So um, you have to be careful uh, not to assume that the data is gonna be consistent across your cl uh, cluster at all times. Um, however, one good thing uh, uh, when it comes to uh, comparing it to uh, some of the traditional uh, uh, replica or replication uh, failovers is that there's absolutely no manual intervention needed. It uh, does so transparently, uh, both to uh, you know, system admins and DBAs, as well as to the applications. And because um, it has um, multiple nodes, some of the quote unquote side benefits would be uh, possibly using those, uh, the secondary nodes for read scaling, um, or application or location spe specific nodes where, for example, if you've got a replica set distributed uh, geographically and your application cons consumers are also uh, distributed like, uh, uh, geographically, you want to maybe direct your reads to those uh, uh, replica set nodes. So, uh, but I say that as side, I call them side benefits because th these are not baked in as you know, go ahead and use these features. It's, um, hey, it's available, but make sure you do your, uh, you know, uh, sort of um, testing and due diligence when you're designing your application. Make sure that you've uh, avoided some of the pitfalls like, you know, stale data and things like that um, so that uh, you are getting your uh, expected results when you actually go into production. So uh, some of the other features that I uh, just wanted to mention real quick would be that it, uh, before uh, version 3.0, there were only 12 uh, replication nodes allowed per replica set. Now you can have up to 50, but they retained uh, the seven voting members, meaning um, uh, for a lot of uh, elections, uh, I mean, for a lot of features like elections and things like that, you still only have seven nodes, you don't have and uh, that is a sort of a sane number so that, you know, we're not waiting around for a large uh, quorum uh, for failovers and things like that. Um, I talked about the fact that um, replication is asynchronous. It is asynchronous, but it also relies, I mean, it is uh, tied to clock time. You know, it's just that it runs behind uh, and, and there's a lag, but it does rely on clock time. Many um, cluster operations rely on clock time. So uh, we've seen uh, cluster operations like operations like balancing and, uh, and a few others uh, 
have issues when there's a lot of clock skew. So uh, as far as possible, uh, and it's not a very difficult thing to do, run your cluster, all your mo nodes on your cluster with NTP uh, daemon running and sync to a either an internal or an external NTP clock. It'll uh, help you avoid some very basic problems across your cluster. Um, another um, key um, sort of improvement in the last uh, few versions is this uh, rep, uh, the election algorithm used to be a time-based uh, election of the primary and that would um, uh, make the elections happen uh, every 30 seconds and you know, I mean there was a 30 second wait time so that there wasn't a lot of back-to-back uh, -back elections and um, issues like that so um, you know when there was fa fa when there were failovers you would uh, you, you you could not uh, predict how quickly you would re recover uh, and have a primary so they they try they worked on a new uh, algorithm instead of going with Paxos they went with draft um, which I mean they did not redo their uh, algorithm they found that uh, they need they could tweak it so now instead of time based it's term based so if uh, a uh, primary has been elected it has a, the entire uh, cluster has a term ID for that uh, primary and there won't be votes uh, multiple votes for that same term. They're like, okay, I already voted in this uh, term, I'm not gonna do it again, uh, makes for uh, faster election of primary. So, you know, that started with 3.2. So if you're considering um, versions, 3.2 is great. 3.4 uh, has not specifically to uh, uh, election, but it has some other uh, features. Uh, I mean, sort of uh, working out of a lot of kinks and bugs that I would uh, definitely recommend it over 3.2. Um, and lastly, uh, I just wanted to mention chain replication. So if you've got a replica set with uh, um, your nodes, uh, again, distributed uh, across geographies, and you'd, or even if it, uh, they're local and you're setting them up and you don't want the primary to be the sole location from where all these uh, chain, uh, where all these secondaries are reading from, replica, uh, MongoDB replica sets provide for chaining of uh, the replication. So uh, your primary will only serve uh, uh, some secondaries and the rest of the secondaries can then read from uh, the first layer of re uh, secondaries so that um, uh, the primary is not overloaded with a lot of uh, reads. All right, so getting into voting, uh, we, uh, yeah, or not we, uh, MongoDB has one vote per member by default uh, voting happens when you first create a replica set. Uh, there's, uh, unless you set priorities, uh, you know, any one of the members would be, uh, could become a primary. Um, it also happens when uh, the existing primary becomes unavailable and when uh, you in, uh, modify the priorities of the existing members. So you do not normally want to uh, mess with uh, the votes of a member you know use priorities uh, and other uh, you know like hidden and things like that for your uh, for what you need uh, messing with the votes could have unintended effects especially because uh, you know uh, selecting of primaries during the failover is based on that so you might not have accounted for everything so be very very careful if you really think that you need to modify votes and votes is just a configuration setting uh, uh, so rs.conf will show you that you know your members all have one vote you can uh, modify it quite easy um, so um, when do you want to ch change it when you are adding more members than the baseline seven uh, seven members um, that uh, you can add to a replica set because every member after rep uh, after the seventh one has to be non voting and uh, the only way to do it is to, uh, is to set its vote to zero so that you, if you want to add, you know, eight, nine, 10, whatever, 11 uh, number of nodes across your uh, cluster, you'd, you'd set the votes to zero first. Um, and then, um, so it has a side effect of priority. We'll go over that a little bit later. Um, another use case would be, for example, again, if, it's, uh, if your nodes are separated by large geographies, 
you do not want to set them to be voting members. So, you know, for example, you have one node in America, one in China, and, you know, they, it's going to wait for that vote to come across. So if you've got a failover, you've got the built-in, uh, you know, uh, algorithm itself taking several seconds for a um, uh, primary to be elected. And if you add in the latency of that vote or, you know, the, the network, uh, there's network jitter, whatever issues, then you might have a, your cluster in a read-only state for a longer time. So if you've got that distribution, I would highly recommend, you know, set your primary to where most of your uh, consumers are, uh, I mean, application-wise, and then uh, set a really remote secondary to have zero uh, vote. And then uh, always remember uh, that, you know, the... They, uh, you know, we all recommend having uh, odd number of nodes because whether you have three nodes or four nodes, uh, your uh, fault tolerance is still uh, one. Whether you've got five nodes or six nodes, your fault tolerance is still two. So, uh, you know, two nodes can go down uh, for five or six, one node for three or four. There's absolutely no reason to be running odd numbers like that. It's just, you know, uh, extra uh, hardware. Unless, of course, you've got some specific need like, again, uh, reporting or in nodes and things like that. So moving on to secondary um, or hidden secondaries. Um, hidden secondaries are mostly used for backups because they will replicate all the data from primaries, but they will be hidden to all of your applications. So they will not show up. Your applications cannot see them. So uh, you want to set them when you want a uh, node to run your queries against uh, that will uh, be for analytics and reporting, uh, reporting and things like that. Again, you cannot use them via the direct uh, replica uh, set access because it'll be hidden, but you can always ac access it to direct uh, the shell or you know a direct connection on that port. So that's why it, it's a, still available for uh, reporting and analytics and other uh, such features. To make it a hidden node, uh, you just have to set the hidden parameter in rs.conf to uh, true, set the priority to zero. Uh, if you forget to do the priority, the Mongo shell will tell you, hey, uh, can't do this, you can't set a hidden, uh, you know, with a priority of zero, so, you know, you'll do that. Um, just some just an example of how you might uh, run that in the shell. So, going on to uh, delayed secondaries. So, delayed secondaries are basically hidden secondaries with one additional par parameter, which is they have a lag additional to, you know, the built-in built like uh, replication lag. Uh, it, this, uh, you set this so that um, in case somebody drops a table, uh, drops a collection, or does something that is logically not, uh, you know, hard to recover from. You want this uh, delayed uh, secondary to easily, uh, instead of a backup, you want it to be available like a hot standby, if you will, uh, to quickly throw it back into the cluster as a primary, take the others out, and they replicate because uh, it's running behind, but at least, you know, you're not going back a day to your old backup, and then, you know, whatever number of minutes, hours you have for your backup restoration uh, procedure, you can throw that right back into the uh, cluster and uh, you'll have some data loss because, uh, you know, you, you lost the, uh, whatever number of seconds you've, ha uh, you've set it to be behind the primary, but it's there as a, a hot uh, standby. So, um, so how do you set that? Uh, again, uh, you set that as a, a property of rs.conf. Uh, um, you set the hidden to true, priority to zero, and a slave de uh, delay to X number of uh, seconds. So, um, it, uh, in a lot of different places, it's seconds versus milliseconds. In this case, it happens to be seconds. So, uh, do your uh, conversion from however many minutes, hours you want uh, it to be behind, and then you put that in there. And uh, you set the the member here uh, w as a zero indexed uh, return. When you look at rsconfig, uh, it'll give you the list of members in your replica set. 
I've seen a lot of times people look at the ID of the members because you know it starts with zero, one, two, three, but over time you might drop and replace nodes and those numbers might change. So if you get into the habit of looking that, at that, you might end up modifying the wrong node. So make sure you don't look at the ID, the underscore ID of the replica node. Uh, it is when you do your rs.conf, you get your members. Uh, and of course, this is JavaScript, so uh, maybe a lot of folks, you know, this might be uh, old hat. But make sure you look at it as a zero indexed uh, array, and you start with zero as the first member, and then however, um, and then however many you have minus one for the actual uh, member. So, so setting priorities. Um, this. Uh, setting a priority is just telling the replica set, hey, this member will be will have X priority to become a primary, nothing else. It's just saying, uh, you know, when you're doing an election, this guy has the, the ability to call an election. This guy has the, will get more, uh, well, priority to become a primary. So uh, hidden and secondaries, uh, oh, I mean hidden and delayed members, uh, are priority zero. Um, changing your uh, priorities can cause, uh, may cause the primary to step down and cause an election. So uh, be careful and be prepared for that. So doing changes of priorities are recommended uh, during maintenance windows uh, because you know if, if you don't, if you want a zero impact kind of a change in priority. So uh, schedule it for uh, a uh, maintenance window. Uh, it can be a decimal, though. It, a lot of time people think that it has to be zero to one, and they're like, oh, you know, I'm stuck. Uh, you know, I selected one as uh, the priority for this, and the next integer, what do I do? Well, it's a decimal number, so, you know, you can put um, something, point something, and then you can insert a, a priority in the middle, or a node in the middle of that priority list. So. Besides uh, not being able to become a primary, pri priority zero members can, they do everything else. They uh, participate in votes. They, um, can, they do replicate data just like other secondaries. And uh, um, yeah, so uh, you know, they, they, just setting the priority does not make them uh, invisible uh, to the cluster in other ways. Uh, when do you use them? Uh, you use them. Um, as a as a backup node in a DC, uh, you know that does not or yeah at a data center that maybe you just want as a backup location, but does not have all the uh, bandwidth and resources that your primary DC has. You know that's the best way, the best time to uh, use priorities. Um, when you do not want changes in your configuration, you say, hey, uh, set the priority for this member to. Uh, you know, zero or whatever you want, so that it does not change your configuration while you're doing some maintenance, so that you prevent flapping because you're making some changes on your node. And again, we saw it that it's uh, set it to zero when uh, you want to uh, configure a node as a uh, analytics or reporting node. Moving on to right concern. Um, When writing data, uh, use your write concern to make sure, uh, you can use that to uh, direct your write to a certain uh, number of nodes, uh, certain number of secondaries to make sure that, hey, I, I sent a write, the primary might have it, which is the default behavior, but now you want to ensure that it's also propagated uh, across your cluster. So uh, you want to make sure, uh, you can use a primary, uh, I mean this uh, write concern, to uh, make sure that uh, either that the secondaries have written your uh, data or have received and journaled your data, so your data is durable. So it can be set up uh, for each query or can be set up when you set up your driver, uh, in your driver when you uh, create your connection object and then it will do it uh, with whatever rule you specified. So. Number of nodes, uh, like I said, uh, you know these parameters. W will tell you the number of nodes. J is just telling the right concern to be uh, durable, so it's uh, written into the journal of the targeted nodes uh, secondaries. And then this is actually very important. This timeout limit. 
Um, with one, uh, with I think Python we tried, there was a 30 second uh, default, but uh, with the shell, there's no, def uh, there's no default timeout. So if you write a write concern and it does not meet a, your criteria, that becomes blocking. It's not a lock on your document, but it just becomes a block in your application. It just waits and waits and waits and waits because that will never be true. Like for example, you've got uh, a three node replica set and you say, hey, I want a response from four nodes. Well, can't happen. So it can't, you know, it does not have the logic. So uh, to, to make that correction. So the only way you can do that is set this timeout and say, okay, if it doesn't happen for X number of uh, milliseconds, um, yes, milliseconds, stop attempting to do that. And then your, it'll return an error to your application and then you can handle it gracefully. So when you are using the right concern, Use majority uh, uh, just because you know you save yourself from uh, the risk. It's not a complete save yourself from risk of like rollbacks and things like that, but it is much safer than just using a um, an n number of nodes and things like that. And then using JTrue journaling is always great. Make sure you always. I can't uh, you know I've never recommended uh, not running a journal other than in development environments. So make sure you run your clusters with journaling and then setting the JTrue will ensure that your data is, uh, you know, durable uh, in all your targeted write concern nodes. So uh, there are some latencies, so uh, make sure you do some testing because I've seen writes without write concerns, you know, be tens of thousands and then suddenly you in insert a write concern with some restriction and it comes to only tens. So it's something that you have to test. Don't assume performance will be all right. Uh, it can be quite severely different. So um, make sure you uh, test that. I'll briefly men mention uh, read concern because um, I personally have not used that uh, too much or dealt with it too much, I should say. Um, local just says, you know, hey, uh, if this is uh, written to local, just give it uh, to the primary, just give it to me if the data has been propagated to the majority and it has returned true from a write concern uh, query, then return it to me. And this one, uh, actually, I, I would refer you to the documents because I'm, you know, there, it was a little bit complicated for me to understand. So I will not get into linearizable. But uh, this one is the most, uh, you know, the follow-up to write concern is read preference. It, default uh, or it removes the default when you're sending a, your a read query it removes the default behavior where only the primary serves up read so if you've got a very busy primary and your application is tolerant of uh, uh, a little bit of data delay this one can be used to direct your reads to uh, read preference can be used to um, direct your reads to secondaries um, and you again you will use um, uh, primary Okay, I should uh, actually back up a little bit and say, uh, again, I would reiterate that whenever you're using your secondary, double check that, it, I mean, not double check, triple check, test, make sure your application is tolerant of uh, being able to read from, pre uh, from secondaries because uh, of lag. Um, and uh, if you are using write concern on one, uh, on some of your queries, there's no guarantee that uh, your reads are gonna uh, return data that have followed that uh, right concern. So um, with 3.4, this is a great new feature uh, or a uh, you know, um, flag you can send and say, I'm accept uh, I can accept uh, data from the secondary, but there's a maximum staleness I'll accept. So uh, you, know, you just send in a um, uh, max staleness value and it will say, okay, this secondary is way behind. I'm not gonna accept the data from there. So the modes available are primary, which is the default, um, and then uh, primary preferred, meaning it'll try the primary, but if, it, uh, you know, if it's uh, quicker to receive it from a, or if it cannot receive it from the primary because of whatever uh, network partition or things like that, it will go to the secondary. Secondary means it'll only get it from the secondary. Secondary preferred means it'll try from the secondary, can't find a good secondary read, it'll go to the primary. Nearest uh, is the one uh, that is kind of interesting for a lot of people because 
uh, it lets you, it lets the whole configuration be dynamic because uh, it's based on round trip uh, ping times and if it's taking too long, uh, you know, you can uh, switch to another, uh, another node. So um, let's go over to uh, the ways you can do that. Uh, to create a, uh, uh, or to use uh, re-preference, you can uh, set it up in the connection object, uh, or I mean in the shell with, uh, you know, set a read preference nearest. Um, and then the second uh, example over here, I show tags, I'll be covering tags in a, a minute here. And in the, um, also when you invoke it, you do a find and then you say, okay, this is the read preference you should use either nearest or uh, whatever tags. So then, um, oh, not nearest, I mean, any of those primary, uh, nearest, secondary preferred, et cetera, tags. Um, tags, like I've been mentioning earlier, go hand in hand with uh, write concern and read preference. Uh, they help you target your writes and reads, uh, you know, to specific data centers, especially when you've got complex, uh, you know, applications and architectures, it be starts becoming helpful because you want maybe your data to be, uh, you know, uh, to go to a certain data center, maybe, you know, in Amazon East or uh, you know, uh, Amazon West, uh, things like that. So you would tag your replica sets with uh, tags under the uh, rs.conf document again, uh, and then that would set those. You would, uh, I showed you how to invoke that with uh, the read preference. And then once you uh, mark them, uh, you know, you write, uh, you send your writes with the right concern uh, and the tag set that you want to use. Um, and then your uh, data will be, uh, will either say error, could not match this right concern or uh, it will come back as successful, meaning that it was acknowledged by the members that you said, I want this acknowledged from. So that really basically covers it. Uh, uh, just some housekeeping, very, very basic stuff. I just wanted to make sure uh, that, you know, uh, whenever you're manipulating priorities, uh, keep in mind uh, it affects your voting structure. So, uh, you know, uh, you want to make sure that if you're taking uh, nodes down that are hidden and things like that, that could uh, trigger elections or have some uh, uh, ramifications to the quorum that you have. So make sure you consider all of that when you're manipulating that, um, this, uh, the architecture uh, that includes hidden and uh, priority zero members. Um, once in a while we find that uh, people forget to reapply the changes. For, uh, that's a very, very minor task, but uh, once you change uh, the rs.conf that you've assigned to a variable, make sure you re reconfigure uh, your uh, REPL set uh, with that uh, variable so that those uh, settings are applied. So uh, that pretty much wraps it up. Uh, I will open it up to questions at this point. So, yeah. So uh, the question is, you've got a uh, distributed uh, um, cluster with, uh, did you say three, uh, was there a specific number? In California, let's say there's two in the state of Washington. Okay, so a five node cluster with three in uh, California or the West Coast and uh, two in the East Coast. And if everything in the West Coast goes down, what happens to uh, the cluster? Does it uh, lock up? So with uh, five and six nodes, like I said, you know, there's a fault tolerance of uh, two nodes. So two nodes can go down and uh, the node can still be serving up data in the sense that it, it can still be writing data except writes. So when, once you have that third node fail, you've got two nodes left, it goes into a read only. Yeah, so, I, I, let's say that data center is not going to fail. Sorry? So the data center, let's say it's not going to fail, Northern California is not going to fail. I can check and add the other two and come back up again. Or I can just flip it on and move one of them right away. Oh, I see. So you're saying, okay, once it goes into uh, read-only mode, uh, you want to convert it into uh, a read-write? Okay. So at that point, the thing is, without a restart, you can't do it because it has that configuration from when it started. 
So it, you cannot sort of dynamically convert that because it's still, uh, it doesn't know whether it, uh, the partition is because of uh, a local issue, network issue, things like that. So it starts off knowing that it's part of a five node cluster. So dynamically doing it while it's live. I don't want to do everything, but I'm going to, I'm going to tell it manually. I don't want, I don't want it to run right away. Oh, well, that's what I meant. Like, you can't do it while it's running. You'd have to restart it. I mean, uh, you, that restart will be really quick, but you'd have to reconfigure it or change your configuration file and then restart it. And then it would pick up as. And if the other side comes back up again, we can do the same for the other side. Uh, you would again have to do a resync. I, I mean, uh, you would have to uh, sort of uh, shut it down, change that configuration. You, it won't sort of move back in directly. Right. So uh, the scenario over here was that, you know, with uh, Amazon AZs, you're, you're fairly close, but you still want to maybe uh, isolate your uh, reads and writes to one AZ. Uh, you know, you want that as an availability uh, rather than a, uh, you know, uh, read location. Uh, what happens or uh, what can you do to that uh, to isolate everything to that AZ? In, in that uh, situation, you would use uh, write concern and uh, read preference so that uh, they don't go over uh, because you want them to be available like a normal like normal uh, secondaries so you don't want to mess around with their configuration if I understood correctly yeah too too expensive right yeah so in that case uh Yes, uh, actually that's a great uh, point that uh, Adama brought up that uh, in that scenario where you've got a uh, distributed cluster, you can always add a third location with a small machine, the arbiter, uh, so that you don't have to do any of the manual uh, filling. Right, you would, uh, at that point you would have five plus one, so you'd need... One arbiter. One arbiter per cluster. Yes. So just. Yes. And you would have to add one more node, though, because uh, you want that uh, failover uh, fault tolerance to go from two to three. So you'd want to go to seven because five and six both have a two node failover. So you'd still have to add one. Uh, well, if you're keeping everything, That'd be five plus, yes, two more nodes. So one of them, which would be an arbiter, and one regular node at that. So you, now you'd be at seven, and then you could have a three node uh, failure, uh, and you'd still be okay to go. And uh, I just wanted to add that uh, in that uh, Amazon, uh, the AZ situation, uh, you know, I, I mentioned write concern and read preference. What I didn't mention and what Adamo uh, pointed out was that uh, you use write concern and read preference with tags rather than some majority or something like that. You use tags so that you you force all of your uh, activity to a certain AZ because you've already tagged those nodes with the AZ. So, all right. Any further questions? Uh, I, I, All right, so the question is, you know, there's a, a non-critical application and you don't want to use um, the failover and all those things, but uh, you don't want to go with a standalone is what I'm understanding. Yes, so in that uh, situation, you'd go with a standalone because all the other uh, features, uh, you know, they quote unquote come for free. I mean, you don't have to like uh, do anything. Uh, if you set up a replica set, all those things come in baked in. So the failover and all that stuff comes baked in. So as soon as you set up a cluster, you you have all that safety net built in. But if you don't want that, uh, just go with a standalone. Yeah, exactly. All right. Now I want my crash to be the primary value to be in DC. I don't want it to primarily go to California. It's not a good question. 
you will need to like, like I yeah exactly uh, and I don't know if I can find it in time here but uh, okay I'm sorry I, I, I yeah uh, somewhere over here, I mentioned you know if you do have uh, a restrictive right concern, your your application could be blocked because it's not fulfilling that right concern. So yes. All right. Well, I really appreciate your time. Thank you so much for attending, and I hope you've had a blast at Perkwan Life so far. And uh, we'll Adamo and I will be available uh, if you have any questions and concerns. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm.